This video shows capabilities needed to add common sense to artificial intelligence. Some of these will bridge the gap between the analog world we live in and the primarily digital world of computers and of the spiking neurons in our brains. I've received many comments asking me to address this. These questions go to the heart of how we'll build more human-like AIs, AIs with common sense, which is the focus of the future AI society. And you can join for free at the link in the video description. Also at the website you can watch recordings of recent online conversations which demonstrate many of the topics in these videos. Of course, please subscribe, like, share, and be sure to leave a comment about what you found most interesting, what you disagree with, and what you'd like to see next. In previous videos, I showed how the thinking part of your brain must incorporate a graph structure of nodes connected by relationships. The approach here has little to do with machine learning, and if you're a machine learning expert, put all that useful knowledge on temporary hold for the duration of this video. Here is a graph with three nodes connected by two relationships, representing the knowledge that Fido is a dog and Fido has fur. I introduced attribute inheritance. By adding the statement, dogs have tails, you immediately know that Fido has both fur and a tail. Then I touched on exceptions, so that your graph can know that all dogs have tails except that Stumpy is a dog which doesn't. These are hugely powerful capabilities, both in terms of logic and understanding, but also in terms of data compression and computational efficiency, both within your brain and an artificial intelligence with common sense. Let's look more closely at the content of a relationship. As described so far, each has a source node, a relationship type, and a target node. If we adopt the mindset of knowledge graphs, the sentences represented by the relationships in this graph would be considered facts. But in the real world, that's not always the case. As an example, suppose a four-year-old tells you that Scruffy is a dog. You immediately build a relationship, but when she shows you Scruffy, you learn that Scruffy is actually a stuffed toy with a minimal resemblance to a real dog. Are you surprised? Not really, because when a four-year-old tells you something, you don't have 100% confidence that the information is factual. What does this mean? When you add the Scruffy is a dog relationship to your mental graph, you include a level of confidence. So let's add confidence as a possible parameter to every relationship. It also means that your graph is flexible and quick at correcting erroneous information, but that's a topic for another video. Having a level of confidence is needed for virtually everything you learn. Sometimes the confidence is high, like the information you're getting in this video, often it's lower. Things you learn from personal experience could have a high confidence of, say, 90%. Seldom 100%. Consider the number of times you've been temporarily fooled. As with optical illusions, where you first think you see one thing, and then learn it's actually something else. Keep in mind that a low confidence in a relationship is different from having a high confidence that a particular relationship is false. Confidence varies over time. After you've created a relationship with a given confidence, if you subsequently receive reinforcing information, the confidence level can increase, and if you receive contradictory information, the confidence level will go down. For your mind to do this, it must also know how many times you've encountered the information in order to know the amount to adjust the confidence value. 
what I call the use count is yet another value that must be available to every relationship in the graph. In the context of common sense, if you use a bit of information and the result is successful, your confidence will go up even more because common sense isn't about knowing stuff. It's about using what you know in real world situations. You can see that confidence values vary over time. So graph relationships aren't absolute connections representing facts. They are fuzzy connections which carry not only a confidence level, but some information about how that level was reached. We can also imagine that over time and use, knowledge may solidify into the factual, unchanging digital information of a knowledge graph. The real world is full of transient data, so what is true now might not be true in the future. Mary is wearing a red dress. You could have a 90% confidence that this is true, even if you can no longer see Mary. But what about tomorrow? Will she still be wearing the same dress? Probably not. So although you have a 90% confidence today, that confidence will fall to near zero tomorrow. So not only can each relationship have a confidence value and a use count, they can also have an expected duration value. And for an expected duration to be useful, you also need to keep track of when you believed the information was true. An is-wearing relationship might have an expected duration of hours, while is-smiling would have an expected duration of seconds. How these durations and variances are stored in your brain is still an open question that I'll discuss in another video. But in computers, it's easy. If you see Mary in a red dress, you would be surprised to see her in a black dress only seconds later. This conflict between your expectation and observation contradicts your common sense and is a primary source of wonder in magic shows. I've introduced duration values as if they are specific numbers which they obviously are not because each has some expected range or variance. As with other values you know, for example, when I tell you I have apples, you don't know the specific size of the apples. You have a range of expected sizes. Considering duration, if Fido is a puppy now, you have some expectation for how long he will remain a puppy with a reasonably large variance. On the other hand, Scruffy is likely to remain Scruffy for the remainder of his existence. Information doesn't just decay with some nice curve, and relationships don't go away when the confidence is low. Just because you have no confidence in Mary's dress color doesn't mean that you don't remember with a high confidence that she wore a red dress yesterday, or maybe just a few seconds ago. Another thing we need to handle is contingency. If we consider as a fact, Mary can play the piano, now consider the complication that Mary can play outside if the weather is sunny. The truth of the first relationship phrase is contingent on the truth of the second. This is a really important concept because virtually everything you or a common sense driven robot might choose to do is contingent on other things. I have implemented some methods to address these wrinkles, but I would appreciate your insights too. Leave me a comment. Before I wrap up, I'd like to introduce one more important aspect. Many of the ideas presented so far in this video are inspired by the work of Pei Wang and his Non-Axiomatic Reasoning System, or NARS. I'll leave a link in the description. But now let's shift to a concept described more fully in Brackman and Levesque's Toward AI with Common Sense. 
Consider, Mary is hungry. Mary eats lunch. Is Mary still hungry? Probably not. This introduces the concept of events, which can change our confidence in relationships as well. So not only is your knowledge fluid over time, it can be changed by the occurrence of specific events. Remembering which events caused which changes is fundamental to the knowledge of deciding which actions to take and is necessary to everyone's comprehension of cause and effect. The point of this video is to show that relationships in a graph of common sense aren't just pointers or database relationships. They have added information, which is obvious and necessary. Relationships in a common sense graph structure cannot just represent facts as much as they must represent confidences, and these confidences can change over time. In future videos, I'll show you features which are even more unique and powerful. I see this approach as fundamental to the addition of common sense to artificial intelligence, which is why I founded the Future AI Society. I hope you'll follow the link and join me on this adventure. Of course, likes, subscribes, and comments are always appreciated. I look forward to interacting with you directly through the Society, and as always, thanks for watching.